Today I want to talk about within plot ways of comparing plant or diversity distributions and then I'll go back and reiterate a little bit about comparing beta diversity between communities. So what is an ecological community? We addressed this in the field and we addressed this in the first week of lectures. It's basically an assemblage of species in a defined area. And how large that area is depends largely on the question that's being asked. So here are a couple examples that we can have. Fish in a lake, plants in a meadow, or cans on the shelf in a grocery store. So one thing we haven't talked so much about and we and one thing we haven't addressed in any of our homeworks is relative abundance and here we're gonna I'm gonna introduce the concept of relative abundance in a single community where you can then make, compare abundance the relative abundance of species across communities so what is relative abundance relative abundance is how abundant or frequent a species is relative to other species in the community. So how do we measure relative abundance in a community? On the y-axis here, we have the abundance across a number of plots that were measured, all of the same type. And on the x-axis, we have the rank. Each dot in this graphic corresponds to a species within that community. First, we calculate how abundant the species is. And then secondly, we rank it against all other species in that community. So if you're the most abundant, you're ranked number one. If you're the least abundant, you're, you have the, lowest, the highest rank in this case about 125 different species. You can tell whether they be human communities, for example the wealth distribution in the city of Bozeman, or the number of non-native species and their relative abundance within a community as these two examples show. So we can think of abundance in relative terms to other members. So what we can see in this distribute in these two graphics is the graph on the left shows that there are many more introduced species, the red dots here, throughout the community. And on the community on the right, there are many fewer introduced or non-native species. And that their rank is actually much lower on average than in the community on the left. But then there's also, you can note that these two communities differ in then how steep the line drops off and when the line drops off. So the more steep the community, the more steep the line, the larger the disparity between greatest abundance and least abundant. And that results in many middling abundant species in this case. So the species aren't exceedingly rare in the community, but they're not exceedingly abundant. We would refer that to that as being an evenly distributed community. When the line is really steep, Kind of like the example on the right side, you can see the line goes down in a more steep nature and doesn't have that hump shape, the real long hump shape as the left community does. That means there are many more rare species and there are many more abundant species. So on average, the community is less evenly distributed. And this is actually a really useful concept in ecology, and there's been a lot of research that have gone, has gone into understanding the shape of relative species abundance distribution. Here is an example from wastewater treatment plants. 
And there are two theories in ecology, two schools of ecology. We'll call them the neutralists and the nichists. The nichists believe that everything that occurs in a community is ultimately governed by rules of community assembly that has to do with niche differentiation. The other school in ecology would be referred to the neutralists that say, really, the interaction between species within a community on the same trophic level do not cause the patterns in relative abundance that we see. And then neutral patterns that arise are actually just caused by dispersal migra and migration and the relative rate of diversity or the speciation rate. And actually these guys in this paper show that there's a mix of both. That niches structure communities to some degree but then there are neutral effects that can't be attributed to niches. So these may be random dispersal events, distance to other nearest communities, things like that. So actually there's both support for both of these kind of ideas in ecology. And that the relative abundance distribution is a main way of analyzing these different patterns. So relative abundance again is how evenly distributed our species in the community and that we can actually calculate indexes to measure the evenness in a community. And that takes into account how even the basic entities are distributed in the community. So there are some different ways to do these calculations. Common ones you hear in ecology are Simpsons, the Shannon Wiener Index, and the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient was originally developed for economics as a way of measuring wealth disparity in a community. So what proportion of the community controls how much of the wealth? It's essentially a relative abundance distribution. So the one percenters, they're the rank one in the community and they control 95 percent of the available resources or they account for 95 percent of the abundance in the community. So think about it a little bit and maybe think to yourself what would the relative abundance distribution look like for that community compared to a community where the middle class it has a larger share of the wealth. So the Sim Simpsons index. The measure equals the probability that two entities taken at random from the data set of interest represent the same type. So if there's low evenness, things aren't evenly distributed, you would expect that you would draw the same species multiple times because it has a higher representation in the community than other species do. The Shannon Wiener Index also measures evenness. And its values are the probability, the p values here, the probability of drawing the same species here is similar to the is similar to Simpson's. So more unequal abundances, the smaller the corresponding Shannon entropy values are. And when abundance is concentrated to one type, then the entropy approaches zero. So this I just want to reiterate, in a community there are rare species and common species. Some species are more, e some communities are more evenly distributed other than others. So you can see that through the graphic here. Here, the species on um, the relative abundance distribution curve indicates that there are more evenly ranked species and here on the left shows that there are fewer species and that they they're less abundant or more rare. 
So that's the idea of evenness or diversity indices. Now, just to clarify, we're going to move on and talking about comparing composition, diver comparing diversity between sites, so beta diversity, how similar are communities. And these are called similarity and dissimilarity measures. And there's multiple ways we can, we can get at these with a lot of different types. So just to review again, you guys just completed homework too, so you should have a good understanding of this. We have, when we're comparing beta diversity and we're comparing the sites to other sites, depending on n, the number of sites you have or the number of plots you have, you can have n minus 1 multiplied by n comparisons. That's the number of unique comparisons you'll make. So you make these large number of pairwise comparisons where A is the species that they share, B is the species unique to plot B, and C is the number of species unique to plot C. And in class we used the Bray-Curtis and the Jacquard's index, but there's actually a whole lot of these and I showed this to you guys before. Here's a number of measures of indices, 1 through 22, and you can actually number these in Beta Diver in the vegan program and just put the number in there and it already has all these indices pre-programmed for you. They have a lot of different, there's a lot of different reasons for the different indices and they're calculated in many different ways. But just to reiterate, don't confuse diversity indices, Shimps, Simpsons, Shannon, and the Gini coefficients with indices for measuring differences in composition between sites. So this was an example that we worked through before. This was Jacquard's index. We did this during the intensive week lectures and we basically compared these two sites which is what the VEGDIST and Beta Diver commands did for us in R. They basically calculated this J and made every pairwise comparison between every plot that we had. So these two sites are about 50% similar. So the value would have been 0.5 when you would have looked at when you look at it within the um, VEGDIST or when you calculate the jacquards for these two sites. So we did this for all the sites in, the, in our Mirren transplant experiment, and then we took that matrix and we regressed it and, and did analysis of variance on it with our treatments, disturbance, and elevation variables and to test whether they significantly predicted shifts in species composition.